In your math notebook, in the table of contents, you're going to write adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Adding and subtracting mixed numbers dot 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 page 24. After you write that in your table of contents, you're going to turn to page 24. Make sure you write page 24 on page 24 wherever you're keeping up with your notes. And here are the steps for adding and subtracting mixed numbers. So first, you're going to get mad. You're going to take those mixed numbers and you're going to convert them to improper fractions. We just went over getting mad on the previous page. So you're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number, add the numerator, keep the denominator the same. After you get mad, you'll have two improper fractions and the rest of these steps are the same. Find the common denominator of the improper fractions, add or subtract the numerators, the denominator stays the same. Convert your improper fraction back to a mixed number with the top in the box, that's how we do that, and then simplify your fraction if necessary. This part here, this step number one, is the only thing that's different than what from what we have been doing. Now, there is another way to do this. And your parents might try to teach you the other way to do this. I am asking you, I am asking them, please not to teach you that other way. Um, the other way involves, when you get to subtraction, it involves regrouping with fractions. And a lot of students confuse regrouping with fractions with regrouping with whole numbers. It's not the same type of regrouping and more mistakes are made with regrouping. Um, so please, 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 parents, don't teach the, your children how to do it the regrouping way. Please let them do it the get mad way. Um, is, this also helps because when we start multiplying fractions and multiplying mixed numbers, you have to turn them into improper fractions to multiply them. Well, it's easier to do it that way. So that's why if we practice getting mad now, it makes multiplication easier and it will have, well, you'll have less mistakes when you do it this way for adding and subtracting. So now that we have our steps here, we are going to work out two problems for examples. So somewhere on that page, you're going to write examples. The first example we're going to do is four and one six plus three and one fifth. We still write them one on top of the other. We're going to get mad and turn these into improper fractions. So I'm going to multiply my denominator times my whole number. Six times four is 24. Plus one more, add my numerator, is 25. My denominator stays a six. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to multiply my denominator times my whole number. 3 times 1 is 15. I'm sorry, 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to add my numerator plus 1 more is 16. 16, my denominator stays a 5. Now the rest of my steps are the same that we've been doing. I'm going to find a common denominator with 6 and 5. I can use a t-chart. Skip count by sixes, skip count by fives. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Common denominator is 30. So I leave myself some room. I give myself the common denominator of 30 for both of them. I go crazy and I talk to myself, hey self, what did I do to 6 to get to 30? Well, self, you multiplied by 5. And if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. Now, multiplying 25 times 5 in your head might be difficult. Some of you know your 25 times tables because you know how to count quarters. But some of you might struggle with multiplying 25 times 5. Guess what? Go to the side of your paper and work it out. 25 times 5. 
5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. 125. 125. Hey, self, what did I do to 5 to get to 30? Well, self, you multiplied by 6. And if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. I can't multiply 16 times 6 in my head, so I'm going to go to the side of my paper again. I'm going to go down here. 16 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 more is 9. So that is 96. I have 125 thirtieths plus 96 thirtieths. Hmm, let me add that on the side of my paper so I make sure I add it correctly. 125 plus 96. 6 plus 5 is 11. 9, 10, 11, 12. 221. 221 thirtieths. Now, this is an improper fraction. You have a very large number on top of a smaller number. So we have to convert it. Step number five, convert your improper fraction back to a mixed number, put the top in the box and divide. So you go down here and divide 221 divided by 30. List the multiples of 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240. That should be enough. All right. 30 won't go into 2. 30 won't go into 22. 30 will go into 221, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. 7 times 30 is 210. I subtract and get 11, remainder 11. So I'm going to take my number, my quotient is my whole number, 7. My remainder is my new numerator, 11. My denominator stays the same. 7 and 11 thirtieths. 11 is a prime number, so I cannot simplify it anymore. All right, our next one is going to be a subtraction problem. 1 and 1 6 minus 2 thirds. Let's do minus 2 thirds. All right. We're going to do minus. I'm going to get mad, and I'm going to multiply my denominator times my whole number. 6 times 1 is 6. Add my numerator, plus 1 more is 7. Denominator stays the same. Now, this one, I don't have to get mad with. There is no whole number. I cannot get mad. So it just stays simply 2 thirds. Now I need a common denominator. I'm going to make a t-chart with 3 and 6. 3, 6, oh look! 6 is the smallest number in both lists. Multiply 6 by 1, so we multiply 7 by 1. We multiply 3 by 2, so we multiply 2 by 2. Now I have 7, 6 minus 4, 6. 7 take away 4 is 3, 6. This is not improper. The big number is not on top. But it can be simplified. I can divide these by the same thing. I can divide them both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So it simplifies to 1 half. I do want to do one more problem because um, this is the trickiest problem. I get a lot of questions about these types of problems every year. So the next one I want to do is, and hopefully you can squeeze it in somewhere, um, 10, it's going to be a subtraction one. Oh, 10 minus 2 and 4 fifths. 2 and 4 fifths. So some of you might be thinking, oh, no problem, Miss Bridges. 
10 take away 2 is 8, so it's 8 and 1 fourth. Okay? So I want to show you, if you take 10, 10 take away 2, yes is 8. But this is 0 take away 1 fourth. You have 0 here, you can't take away 1 fourth. It is not 1 fourth. 0 take away 1 fourth is not 1 fourth. You cannot do that. You have to, you have to regroup. Now, this is not the answer. I wrote it on a sticky note so I could toss it away. I did not know I was going to rip my paper when I did it, though. <laughs> All right. So we don't know how to regroup with fractions. It's too difficult. So we are taught the get mad way. And now some kids are like, oh, no, I can't get mad. There's nothing to get mad with. Here's what you do. We just said this was zero. We'll turn that zero into a fraction. Is it zero bananas, zero fraction, zero halves, zero thirds? Well, you could make it zero anything. But if you want to work smarter, not harder, you're going to use this denominator so you don't have to find a common one in a few minutes. Go ahead and do zero fourths. Zero fourths. Now they are common. Yay! Now I can get mad. So I'm going to get mad. 4 times 10 is 40, plus 0 is still 40, so this is 40 fourths. I'm going to get mad, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 more is 9, 9 fourths. Now I can subtract, 40 take away 9 is 31, denominator stays 4. I didn't have to find a common denominator, they were already common because I work smarter and used zero fourths instead of zero thirds or zero eighths or zero something else. This is improper, so I need to put the top in the box and divide. 31 divided by four. That is seven, remainder three. So seven with my remainder three, denominator stays a four. Seven and three fourths. So first, you need to know you cannot subtract your whole numbers and your fractions separately. And when you freak out because there's nothing there, all you have to do is put 0 and use the same denominator. 0 4, 0 8, 0 12, 0, whatever the other denominator is, so that saves you from having to find a common one later. We will use these notes to practice adding and subtracting mixed numbers next week.